Uh, Mike, you there? I am. Sorry about that diatribe that we're going through. I just wanted to kind of work out that question. Uh, what state are you in? Uh, I'm uh, out in California here tonight. And nice. uh, at least my part of it's not burning down. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't actually know California was on fire before, besides at the legislature. So, um, which is always the dumpster fire at, at that place. Yes, so, it is. Um, what you got, my friend? So, my specific question is uh, this: I I'm wondering, kind of, where are some uh, limits I can work a little bit better in identifying passengers? I've noticed in more recent, like the last few months, it wasn't really occurring in recent years, but just like since the beginning of the year, I've noticed more and more passengers when I ask for identifications go, nope, I, I'm not going to do that. And I don't have to. And so far I've been kind of getting by with, all right, I understand what you're saying, but you know, there is case law that supports my ability to identify people inside a vehicle. And that sort of, that seems to be working for me so far. Most people uh, well, they kind of look at me for a second, like, do I really know what I'm talking about? And then they'll hand over their identification. I ID them and I move on. And I've only had one instance here recently where it almost went to a resisting arrest because the person didn't want to identify. Mm. And at, th at that point, I mean, I had, I was on the stop. I had officers from a neighboring agency assisting me and they, it, it was on a, 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 a DUI stop. So, you know, I, I wanted to get the passengers out of the vehicle because the vehicle was getting towed. And I wanted them to, you know, to kick rocks and get down the road if they weren't going to identify because I didn't want them in my my traffic scene. So mm -hmm. I, I'm just kind of looking where where are my my limits and is there any other case law currently floating around that could help me better? Oh, there's a case. ID there's a case. That? Well, there's a case directly on this point. It's It's actually not in your favor. It actually says the opposite. Um, and it's, it's from the ninth circuit called Landros. Um, remember Landros, John, or you want me to, want me to explain that case? Yeah. You explain Landros. So Landros is from a state that makes the worst case law. Uh, what state is that, John? So I just want to hear you say it. Just, can you just say it? Just be honest with yourself. You don't, you don't have to be uh, embarrassed. Washington. Okay. It's called yeah. Arizona. No, and Washington. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened, which obviously is the ninth, the ninth circus. And what happened there is an officer um, demanded, he, he had a car stop. There was, you know, it's one of these cases where actually the officer did the right thing. He just did not, he did, he did not know how to articulate it, which is a common thing we talk about uh, all the time at Blue to Gold. So in, in essence, uh, Mike, the uh, Landros was a passenger in a car. The driver was, um, was, was an adult, uh, but there were three, Three, two or three teenage girls in the back of the car, in the back seat, and they were intoxicated. Okay. The officer then asked Landros, the pastor, for his ID. Landros did not want to identify himself because he says he's done nothing wrong. The officer then essentially arrests him for obstruction for failing to ID. And when they got him out, they found alcohol under his legs. They did not know he had alcohol. And they get him, they got him for contributing to a minor and the obstruction. The Ninth Circuit said, hey, look, you can't arrest people. You can't you cannot arrest a passenger simply because they are refusing to identify themselves. They have done nothing wrong. So that's the baseline um, law here. Right. However, can you see that the cop actually had reasonable suspicion to identify everybody in the car because they're committing? Right. My, right, John. I mean, you, it's clear as they like I mean, they're, they're, they have drunk. You have drunk girls in the back seat, teenagers or, you know. And um, is there a reasonable suspicion that Landros, the pastor, contributed to their delinquency? Ab absolutely. Yeah, or probable cause. Or even probable cause. Right. And so instead of going to court and saying that, he basically said, I have, he, his mentality was, look, I have the right under Arizona law to identify people because we have a stop and identify statute. Well, it gets more complicated for California because you've got PC 148. But, but you don't have a stop and identify statute in California. Even right. if the person is uh, reasonable suspicion, they don't have to identify themselves. They can't lie to you. They can't open their mouth and say there's somebody who they're not. That would be R or sorry, PC for a crime. But they don't have to. So, so here's the thing. So not only do we have Landros as a basic case in the Ninth Circuit says you cannot demand ID from passengers um, unless you have reasonable suspicion, you also don't have a stop and identify statute in California. So I would be very careful 
in California with the like 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 demanding any kind of ID from a pastor because you know quite frankly if they sue you if they do handle their ID they can they can strictly strictly speak and say you violated my rights because you gave me an unla- you gave me an unlawful order or whatever I'm not sure how that'll play out in a in a civil suit but the point is you got very limited options um, if you want them to leave they can leave but if they don't want to identify themselves they don't have to gotcha that works okay anything else. Uh, I could probably think of a million things, but that that that's okay. kind of my okay. my header issue right now. Okay, Thank I'm glad you. we I'm glad we worked that out because that's a, that's an excellent question. We get it all the time from uh, California cops. Give it the good work, my friend, and thank you for coming on. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, man. Thank you.